Breath of the Wild is packed with references to other Zelda games. The world itself is littered with landmarks and locations named in reference to other games in the series, like Linebeck Island, Minshi Woods, or a series of bridges just north of the Great Plateau all named after bosses from the original game. Dig Dogger, Aquamentus, Manhandler, and Gleok. But these are surface level references, simple homages in name only. The game actually hides a bunch more extensive easter eggs and references, such as the ruins of Ocarina of Time's Lon Lon Ranch found just south of Castletown. These ranch ruins are almost identical to Lon Lon Ranch, with the buildings leading onto the horse pen and racetrack, even including the tower behind, in which a cow and a piece of heart can be found in the Nintendo 64 game. A similar, but less apparent reference is the Arbiter's Grounds in the Gerudo Desert, half-buried ruins which call back to the Colosseum-like execution grounds from Twilight Princess. The game's been out for nearly three years at this point, and most of the largest, most obvious easter eggs have already been talked about extensively, not only on my channel, but on others too. So today, let's run through some of the lesser known, more obscure easter eggs and references to other Zelda games found in Breath of the Wild. So subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content, and without further ado, let's jump into it. At the Woodland Stable, just on the edge of the Minshi Woods leading to the Korok Forest, a character called Shimei can be found near some barrels. She claims that she wants to see balloons raise up into the sky, and that she'll reward Link with a treasure from the sky if he can realise this dream. After Link slaps some Octo Balloons on a barrel, causing them to gently rise into the air, things get interesting. Shimei bursts out. Floaty! Balloons soaring high in the sky. Fly up and away to the land in the clouds. I want to visit the land in the sky by balloon. Then I'm gonna ride a really big bird. Yep, that's my dream. Before rewarding him with a star fragment, a treasure from the sky. This little exclamation is obviously referring to Skyward Sword, where people live on a land in the clouds, Skyloft, and travel across the skies on really big birds, Loftwings. Shimei claims that sometimes she sees this land in the skies in her dreams, and wonders if a long time ago people used to live above the clouds. It's an interesting reference to Skyward Sword. Perhaps this kid has some sort of retrocognition, able to dream of events long, long ago when people flew on Loftwings and lived on Skyloft. It's likely nothing more than a neat reference for those who've played Skyward Sword, but I love seeing little connections to other games. Little details that remind us Zelda games take place in a larger chronology. Breath of the Wild's amiibo functionality is one giant steaming heap of fan service, gifting Link iconic weaponry and equipment from across the Zelda series. It's mostly agreed by fans that these items aren't canon, but canon or not, it's incredibly fun smashing through Lynels dressed as the Hero of Time. And one of the most fitting sets, considering how closely Breath of the Wild is connected to the roots of the original Zelda, is the Hero outfit and sword. The sword's description reads, A sword once wielded by a hero in an ancient age. When grasped, a strange sense of nostalgia washes over you. Take it when going alone would otherwise be dangerous. And the outfit which accompanies it is based on the clothes worn by the very first hero, all the way back in 1986. But it's not this on-the-nose reference we're talking about. To see this little easter egg, we need to look at just the trousers of the hero. On the right leg, there's actually a tiny white sprite of an Octorok, the most iconic enemy from the first Zelda game and the first enemy Link is likely to encounter in it. In fact, Breath of the Wild's guardians themselves were based on these humble mollusks, which during development of the original seemed huge to the designers, which inspired the colossal, multi-legged design of the Sheikah machines. So it's great to see a tiny nod to such an important, classic Zelda enemy. Just south of Hyrule Castle, amidst the barren ruins of towns long forgotten, are the Ranch Ruins, the remains of a humble farm. 
But of course, these ruins don't belong to any regular ranch. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that these are a direct reference back to Ocarina of Time's very own Lon Lon Ranch, the home of Malon, Talon, and of course, Epona. However, far to the southeast in Hateno Village, there's a more obscure reference to Ocarina of Time's Lon Lon Ranch, fresh milk. This milk is produced by farm animals kept by Hateno villagers, and sold by multiple NPCs as well as the East Wind General Store. But those who've played Ocarina of Time will notice that this isn't just ordinary milk. It's almost identical to Lon Lon milk, with the exact same cow design, and the text even translating to read Lon Lon. Whether this means that these bottles were originally produced by the ranch before the calamity is unclear, but it's a neat reference regardless to an iconic, classic Zelda item. <laughs> the southeastern border of Breath of the Wild's Hyrule is surrounded by a vast blue ocean, seemingly endless empty waters, which are broken only by a few small islands. Most of these islands are home to hardly more than a few palm trees, but one in particular hides one of the game's best side quests, Eventide Island. Upon washing up on Eventide, you're stripped of all equipment. Using only the weapons found on the island itself, Link must kill or avoid the enemies found here, hunting for three orbs scattered across the island and place them in their pedestals which signals his conquest of the trial and reveals the island's shrine atop the small mountain. Eventide Island by itself is one of the best parts of Breath of the Wild, but it gets even cooler when you consider that the entire island could be a reference to Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening takes place after Link's tiny one-man ship is struck by lightning, causing him to wash up on the sands of Toronbo Shores, with no equipment from his previous adventures. After reclaiming his shield from Taran, Link travels back to the Octorok-infested Torombo Shores, where his sword lies in the sand by the sea. And you're most likely to land on the beaches of Eventide Island, after crossing the sea in a tiny one-man raft, assuming you take the route from Tenako Island, which most new players will, without any of your previous equipment, left even without a sword or shield. But just like in Link's Awakening, along the sands of Toronbo Beach you can find swords and shields. After obtaining your sword and shield in Link's Awakening, you embark on a mysterious quest to Wake the Dreamer, obtaining eight instruments of the Sirens from the dungeons across the island, before travelling to the peak of the isle, Mount Tamaranch, where a great egg sits. And in Breath of the Wild, Link has to claim Sheikah orbs from across the island revealing a shrine at, you guessed it, the peak of the island. This small elevated area at the southern side of the island is a strange rock formation, a stepped mountain similar to Link's Awakening's Mount Tamaranch, and it even seems to be shaped somewhat like an egg. And I know I said I wouldn't mention location names, which are mostly just throwaway references to past Zelda games, but the beach you land on on Eventide Island, incredibly similarly to Toronbo Shores, is called Toronbo Beach. And the large rock at the peak of the island, similar to the egg on top of Koholint, Koholit Rock. I don't think Eventide Island is actually Kaholin, like I've theorised that the Forgotten Temple could be the ruins of Skyward Sword Sealed Temple, or the ranch ruins being Lon Lon Ranch. Kaholin was never a real place, only a mirage. Despite this, I think the designers of Eventide Island were referencing the classic Game Boy game with this trial. And it's fitting that atop the mountain on Eventide Island, where the Windfish would sleep in Link's Awakening, Link can encounter Mimo, who explains that it's only up here, on Koholit Rock, that he can properly hear the wind, that he wants to live as the wind does, free and unrestricted, and to listen to its voice offers a taste of that freedom. Mimo runs a paragliding minigame in which he trains Link to become the wind, sitting atop a peak inspired by Mount Tamaranch. Hyrule Castle is one of the most interesting locations in the game, once the proud seat of the royal family, an opulent citadel standing firm above the plains of Hyrule Field. But by the time of Breath of the Wild, it's a ruin, poisoned with malice and the infestation of Calamity Ganon, 
who lurks inside a cocoon inside the Sanctum. This room was once the throne room of the castle, where the champions were inaugurated to their sacred roles as the pilots of the Divine Beasts by King Rome, with royal guards, Hylian soldiers, and members of their own races standing in attendance. However, there's a neat detail which is hard to see during this cutscene, but clearer during the game. There's a large Triforce design above the thrones, surrounded by a strange circular design. This isn't designed to just look cool and surround the Triforce, it's actually musical notes. The ocarina notes for Zelda's lullaby, the song of the royal family. The notes occasionally don't match up absolutely perfectly, with some being slightly above or slightly below the correct position for the lullaby, perhaps a result of a century of decay. Either way, it's clear that these notes are intended to resemble those of Zelda's lullaby, the melody of the royal family, which first appeared in A Link to the Past, but had its most iconic appearance in Ocarina of Time, taught to Link by Impa, a sacred melody passed down for generations. We hear the lullaby at various times during Breath of the Wild, as part of Hyrule Castle's theme, when Zelda speaks, and as the nighttime horse riding theme, but it's cool to see that the song still exists in universe after tens of thousands of years, still remembered and honoured as the song of the royal family. Further into the bowels of Hyrule Castle, far below the sanctum, we find the library containing the wealth of books which once belonged to the royal family. Once a great hall for learning and study, now a ruin crawling with Lizalfos. There are a few secret rooms here, like one where we can see an excavation leading to the outer walls of the Sheikah Observatory in which we fight Calamity Ganon, and the King's hidden study. But what we're interested in today is one of the open castle library books, found on the balcony. There are two of these open books in the library, both detailing recipes used and loved by the royal family and their attendants. The first book is the princess's favourite recipe, fruitcake, which apparently helps to clear one's head and allows them to focus on things like ancient technology research. But the second is a little stranger, the chancellor's favourite, monster cake a dangerous dish that makes your head fuzzy, and may even motivate you to plan evil schemes. So the first recipe is clear. Princess Zelda's favourite food was apparently fruitcake, and she was known for her research into ancient technology. But who was this Chancellor? Well, this could actually be a neat little reference to Spirit Tracks, the second Zelda game on the DS, and the final so far in the adult timeline, which takes place in New Hyrule. The game's secondary antagonist is known as Chancellor Cole, an impish servant of the kingdom who wears two green top hats. He's one of Zelda's advisors, but she begins to grow suspicious of him. The Chancellor is revealed to be working to revive Maladus, an ancient demon king, and his two top hats actually hide two monster horns. A Chancellor working for the royal family who plots evil schemes just like the Chancellor mentioned in the royal family's recipe. The fact that it's monster cake, too, not any other monster recipe like monster curry or monster soup is significant too, as monster cake features two curved horns, the distinguishing feature of Chancellor Cole. While other monster recipes all feature the malice-stained purple colouring, only the cake features these horns. So, perhaps before the Great Calamity, a Chancellor worked from within the royal family to plot evil schemes. Or perhaps it's just a neat reference to a villain from one of the more underappreciated Zelda games. So, there are some cool obscure easter eggs and references to other Zelda games found in Breath of the Wild. Are there any I've missed? Which were your favourites? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, leave a like, or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.